Okay, today we're going to be talking about graphing compound and quadratic inequalities. Uh, so, the remember from the previous, from the review, if you watched that, we talked about how to graph uh, inequalities on a one-dimensional line, and just as a very quick, in case you skipped it, like I say, if we wanted to draw a graph of um, x is less than 2 or something like that, here's 2, so then x would be everything over here. That's a very sloppy way of doing it, but that will work for now. So that was just a quick review in case you didn't watch the previous video. So now we're going to talk about what if we want to show a graph on a show a graph of multiple conditions at once. Okay, so what if we want to show a graph of multiple conditions at once? For example, let's say we want to graph x is less than 3 and x is greater than negative 5. Now, what we're doing is we're, we're wanting to graph w the place where, where both of these conditions are true. So, first, let's graph these individually. So, let me go ahead and write this down. Okay, let's graph these individually. So, first let's graph... Okay, let me scroll down a little bit because I'm going to need more room later on. Let's graph x is less than 3 on the number line. So, here's 0. Here is positive 3. x is less than positive 3. And also, I um, <clears throat> I went ahead and created a, just so that you don't have to see my um, kind of bad drawing every single time, I wrote a script in a program that'll show us a, a more um, objective, you might say, um, graph so this is this is x is less than 3 let me put this down uh, that way you, know, so you can see it more clearly and now let's also do x is greater than negative 5 so x is greater than negative 5 so that's everything to the right of negative 5. Okay, so let's do, let's see a better picture of that. You can say greater than negative 5. Okay, so that is greater than negative 5. Okay, let's go ahead and get that out of the way for now. And um, so We've graphed these individually. Now the question is, we're we're trying to do. Okay, let me scroll up a little bit. We're trying to show where x is less than three and x is greater than negative five. So where are these both true? Where is x? Let me put a little bit more space there. Where is x less than three and greater than negative 5. Well, it's in all the places that we have in common. It's in this area right here. So the place where x is less than 3 and x is greater than negative 5 is going to look like this. You have 0 in the middle, you have negative 5 here, and you have 3 here. So we have an open circle around the 5, an open circle around the 3, and everything in between filled in. But it doesn't go off to negative infinity, it doesn't go off to positive infinity. We just know that um, x that x is between th negative 5 and 3, because x is less than positive 3, and x is greater than negative 5. And again, I want to go ahead and show you a uh, slightly a computer-drawn version, so we have between negative 5 and 3. So, 
Okay, I'll go ahead and clear this off. And we have between negative 5 and positive 3. Okay. So, let's go ahead and clear all that off. Now, uh, the, the new graph, after I already cleared it off, so the, the new graph was everything that's common to both individual graphs. So you had... Um, So you had less than 3, and you had greater than negative 5. I forgot to say this exactly the way I wanted to say it, so I had to redraw it. So the thing is, the new graph is, this graph down here is everything that is common to both of the individual graphs. Okay, so now let's take a look at this algebraically. Sorry, I think my program just almost crashed. Okay. Algebraically, x is less than 5, not 5, I miswrote that. My apologies x is less than 3 and x is greater than negative 5 wow I, I typed them both wrong x is greater than 3 and x is less than oh my gosh got the backwards again x is less than 3 and greater than positive negative 5 wow when uh, negative 5 is less than x and less than 3 now let, let me rewrite this one right here as negative 5 is less than x so, if x is greater than negative 5, then I think we can agree that 5 is, negative 5 is less than x. See, so now all I'm doing is I'm combining this part and this part to get this part. Because negative 5 is less than x. We know that from here. And x is less than 3. So, which is where we, how we got this. So, if x is less than 3 and x is greater than negative 5, then negative x is less than x, which is negative 5 is less than x, which is less than 3. And I want to go into um, what we call... This, this kind of goes into some... Um, some set theory stuff. When we use the word and in this sense, this is called the intersection of x is less than 3 and x is greater than 5. This is the notation of it. You're never going to need to do that in this particular class. You might need to use it a little bit in the next algebra class. I'm not really sure about that. But if even if you do, probably not very much. But I just wanted to kind of expose you to it because I think it's good to help you understand what's going on. When we say intersection, we mean that everything that is both less than 3 and greater than negative 5. Okay, now let's go on to a different kind of example. Different kind of example x is greater than 2 or x is less than negative 1. The or here changes things. It changes what it is that we're looking for. It changes the graph. So, um, let's take a look again at the individual graphs and we'll see how they can relate to each other. Okay, so x is greater than 2. So here's 0, here's 2, x is greater than 2. So we have an empty circle and we do everything here. Everything to the right of 2. And then x is less than negative 1. That circle is really small.
everything less than negative one. Okay, but notice, see, we were doing before when we had and, we said everything that has that they each have in common. But with or, we're looking for every place where one or the other is true. So, where is where is one or the other true? Let me put some space in between there. Where is one or the other of these things true? Well, one or the other is going to be true on this new graph. At two, everything to the right, and at negative one, everything to the left. So now what we've done is we've merged the two graphs. So the the new graph is the merging of both individual graphs. Now um, algebraically speaking, um, see we have this x is greater than 2 or x is less than negative 1 this is as simplified more or less as it gets. Now you could also write in terms of set builder notation um, just because you know, we talked about set builder notation before so I want to go ahead and just bring it up again so we have that um, the set of all x such that x is greater than 2 or x is less than negative 1 Uh, whoops, just a second. Now, again, you're not going to be using set builder notation in this class. I just think it's good to have some exposure to it. Uh, it can also be written, I said something about intersections before. It can be written as x such that x is greater than 2. Uh, union now, instead of union instead of intersect. That that's this union is the or instead of the intersect, which was, which was the and. Uh, instead of all x, such that x is less than negative one. Okay, I know this probably seems very odd b at first glance, but it actually, um, if you understand this, then it's going to be very helpful. Basically, what this is saying is we're taking these two sets and we're just putting them all together. We're all, we're just saying that, okay, we have everything that, that's where x is greater than 2, everything less than negative 1. Now we're just putting them together. The union is the set of all x such that x is greater than 2 or x is less than negative 1. Okay, now, um, I wrote something out and I thought it might be helpful. Uh, at least I, I hope it's helpful. It's the distinction of when to use and and or. Or I mean, what they, what they mean individually. So, if you have two conditions that are joined by and, then look for where they are both true. And which means what the graphs have in common. But on the other hand, so that means like if we have, oh, that's that's not straight at all. So for and, that means if we have uh, two graphs and we have one that goes over here, and let's say this is a closed circle, and one that goes over here, If we have an and, we only care about what they have in common. So the new graph will be just just this section right here. So it'll be just from here to here. Like that. But on the other hand, if you have something, two conditions that are joined by or, then look where one or the other is true. Instead of just um, looking for what they have in common, just put one on top of the other. So if we have this and this, then the new graph 
is going to be this. Now you don't need to necessarily draw every single individual graph for every single individual problem. The main reason I'm doing this is, is just so that you can see what the process is, what the difference is between AND and OR. So let's go on to some examples. Oh, uh, no, never mind. So, let's go on to this example. Oops. So, for example, what if we have that 8 minus x is greater than, greater than or equal to 6, and at the same time, 10x plus 9 is greater than or equal to um, negative 11. Uh, so, what we want to do here is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this. First thing we need to do is we need to get x by itself in both of these inequalities because um, we can't graph these if we don't know exactly what x is going to be. So, for this one right here, um, we have 8 minus x. Oh, bad handwriting. Let's redo that. 8 minus x is greater than or equal to 6. So that means that 8 uh, negative x is greater than or equal to 2. And now we want to multiply both sides by negative 1. But remember what happens when you do that. You need to flip the sign. So instead of being a greater than or equal to, it's a less than or equal to negative 2. And so then, for this next part, we, we still have an AND conjoining these two. So we have 10x, let's get that out of the way, 10x plus 9 is greater than or equal to negative 11. Okay, so now we want to subtract 9 from both sides, so we'll get 10x is greater than or equal to negative 20 and x is greater than or equal to negative 2 so we have that x is something went wrong what did I do here this went wrong okay my apologies um, this should be negative 2 I'm glad I caught that so this should be positive 2 so that means you have x is less than or equal to 2 or x is greater than or equal to negative 2 okay I knew something was wrong there so um, these are our two conditions our two boundaries so to speak so I will go ahead and I'm not going to bother trying to draw that here I'll do something that's a little bit neater I will do this. The plot it has between negative 2 and positive 2 and this is what it should look like. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, move on to another example. This is uh, for this was this was an, an example where we have two conditions joined by and. Now let's go on to an example where we have two conditions joined by or. Okay, so let's clear all that off and move on to uh, just a second. Okay, for example, 5x plus 1 is less than 1 or 3x minus 9 is greater than 9. So, again, we want to put this in a form where we can actually use it. So we have 5x plus 1 is less than 1. Subtract 1 from both sides. Get x, 5x is less than 0. Or x is less than 0. So that means 3x, this is all joined by or. 3x minus 9 is greater than 9. So we can add 9 to both sides. That's way bigger than I meant for it to be. So 3x is greater than 18. Or x is 
greater than 6. So these are my two boundaries. So now we want to draw it like this. Okay, so we have an open circle at 0 going infinitely to the left because we have x is less than 0 or, I forgot to put the or in between here, I think I forgot to put the and in between for the previous one, or x is greater than 6, so we have an open circle at 6 going infinitely to the right. Okay, so that concludes this particular example. So remember, remember that we have the open circle going to the left and the open circle going to the right. Okay, so let's clear that off. And now let's go on to a quadratic example. So how about and a quadratic inequality. Here's an example. See, we have a quadratic function here, or a quadratic expression, I should say, is less than zero. Okay, so now let's kind of think about what this means for a second. Uh, this one is is really very different from what we were doing before, uh, because let's let's first visualize the 2D graph of some parabola. It doesn't really need to be any particular parabola. It only needs to be one that opens up. And the reason why I say that is because uh, this is one that opens up. And I know that because there's a positive in front of the x squared term. So it, sorry, what I mean is that there's no negative number in front of the x squared term. So a general parabola looks something like this. We're looking for where this parabola is less than 0. So that means that um, we, we look... so. Where is this parabola going to be less than zero? Well, it's going to be less than zero between the x-intercepts. It's going to be less than zero where it, between the two places where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So we need to find where the x-intercepts are and say that x is between those two x-intercepts. And it's very important to visualize the quadratic function when you're doing this so that you're certain you're looking for the right thing. I mean, if this had been greater than zero, then we would be looking for this over here or this over here. You'd have a, an or function. If, on the other hand, this had a negative in front of it, we'd be looking for um, we'd be looking for a, a, a parabola that opens down. So it'd be so it looks something like this. So we'd want from the left side of this and from the right side of this. But it's so it's very important to understand your, to visualize the the parabola that you're looking at to make sure that what you're doing is actually um, so make sure you're looking for the right thing. So the first thing we want to do is find the x-intercepts of the parabola. So if we have um, x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. See right now I'm, I'm not looking for, the reason why this is equal to instead of less than is just because I'm only looking for where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So I only care about where it's equal to for this for this right here because remember we're, look, we're looking for the two x-intercepts so that we can say x is between those two x-intercepts. So um, this factors out to x plus 2 x minus 3 equals 0. So x is equal to negative 2 or x is equal to 3. So let me go ahead and type that out so it can be seen more clearly. x is equal to negative 2 or x is equal to 3. So um, we want to be between these two and we know that because of our visualization of the parabola and that is so important that I'm going to go ahead and write it down. 
So that means that if x is between negative 2 and 3, we now need an algebraic condition to describe this. So that means that um, we have that negative 2 is less than x is less than 3. See, this negative 2 is the smaller number. This positive 3 is the larger number. And we say x is greater than the, neg the smaller number and less than the larger number. That means that x is between these two. So now let's go ahead and um, graph this. And once again, I'm not going to subject you to my not so great drawings, hand drawings for this particular one. So x is between negative 2 and 3. All right. That concludes this section. I know this was kind of a strange one, but uh, hopefully that was helpful and hopefully it won't be too hard to do. So I will see you in the next section.